I never thought I would actually evolve to a point that like I was competitive. So for me now, it's more just about my self-esteem and validating that like, I'm not that fat kid anymore. I'm not the awkward teenager. I'm not the you know new hire to a company that's in a conference going, yeah, I have a good idea, but is everybody looking in the room like, wow, dude needs to cut some weight. Like, you know, these are the things that go through your head. And then I think what it does is it also spirals you a little bit out of control, which is kind of where my story you know, started. Uh, Kelly's my trainer. Um, she's been my trainer and my coach since um, maybe four years now, so 2015. You know, you have to meet Kelly to understand. She's, she's a badass. So male, female, it doesn't matter. Like, she's a badass. She walks in the gym and she just demands a presence. Um, her physical stature, her attitude, the, the very way she moves around the weight room. Like, you know she, know, she knows her, she knows her shape. Um, when I was changing jobs, the last couple of years of my past job, I wasn't really happy. And I think that's partially when I found fitness because it's like, all right, the career's not working for me anymore. The career's not driving me 100%. I look in the mirror, I'm not happy. I'm like, what's gonna change me? Fast forward five years, kind of in a decent group. I got a new job, I got a new opportunity. Everything's supposed to be great. I'm getting track of all my fitness goals. And then all of a sudden it's like, crashed a motorcycle um, after riding for 20 something years. And unfortunately I broke my hand. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, you're telling me I can't work out? That was actually pretty terrible. And he's called me from the hospital and I had just gotten to my daughter's softball game. And he's like, Michelle? And I'm like, yeah, don't worry. He's like, I, I fell. Doing what? <laughs> he's like, well, we were on the road and I was like, oh God. So at least, you know, at, at that point, he's like, I'm fine. I think it's just, I broke my hand. He went to the hospital with a broken hand, riding his motorcycle with one hand, however, 50 miles or where, however long it was. We decided we should probably go to the orthopedic and then <laughs> that's when he had hand surgery and pins and... Um, so I think psychologically, all the worst things went through my head. Like, wait, I'm, I'm not the career guy anymore. I'm not the motorcycle guy because I just crashed my motorcycle. Like, maybe I'm not meant to ride a bike anymore. And now you're taking away lifting heavy weights and going to the gym and getting my aggressions out and being the strong guy. Like, I can't do that anymore either. Like, like, where's my identity? Like, what do I do now? Um, so for eight weeks, it was tough. And it was the first time that, that Kelly and I seriously talked about doing a competition. So the deal was I'd be out for eight weeks. We were gonna hit it hard. And by week three, I was like, yeah, I broke my hand. And we're getting closer to the show. And he's still going on these motorcycle trips. And I'm saying to myself, dude. <laughs> You cannot crash right now. So that was a hard eight weeks. And you know, when I finally got back to it, I was more passionate about it than ever. Um, and just because I saw how quick my body could transform back to what I didn't want and how this is a constant struggle. Um, the biggest thing I think I found that people don't realize what dieting is, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. 2018 is when I hit the ground running again. And then 2019 was finally when Kelly said, you gonna do this this year or what? And that was like mid-year. Um, so we started six months ago from now. So we figure May, perfect. It started with, I wanna lose some weight. to impress it's it's just always a constant battle with myself can i can i raise my own bar and can i get over that bar matt um, has gone through a lot of ups and downs both uh weight wise and transforming careers everything so something that i admire is how hard he's actually worked for it i mean from how he's almost changed uh, like what we do as a family like instead of hey guys let's go out to get something to eat he'll be hey how about we go for a hike or how about we do this so he's almost he's taken his plan but also worked it in as a family plan 
to kind of change the family and make us better. It's good to see how he has um, progressed from just a wanting to change, you know, his health to his competition, and, and it's great to see him uh, in this environment because all the hard work and dedication is um, finally going to pay. No matter what happens, he's not a 42. Si he's not a size 42 anymore. He's not a 54 jacket. He's not. He's not anything he was afraid he was when he first started this, and he's more than he ever knows he could be. I mean, I think my dad's competition is pretty cool. I mean, I can definitely say that not a lot of my friends have dads that are doing these types of competitions. Uh, I love training Matt. He's, he's extremely focused. He's a very, very hard worker. Um, he doesn't quit even when he wants to. Uh, and he pushes, he pushes himself. You know, um, I, have, I have worked with other people who are not as so dedicated. Matt is extremely dedicated. And because he works so hard, it makes you want to work harder too. Matt has always had a really intense personality. He loves hard, he commits hard, he plays hard. So it was no surprise to see that he dove head first into this. And um, his dedication has been uh, not only amazing, but it's been inspirational to a lot of us around him and has, has made us want to, you know, dedicate our lives to getting healthier and, and more fit. Maybe not as fit as Matt, but more fit than what we were. <laughs> It's been pretty amazing. I think when you think of everything he's done in his life from, he, he's always been a go hard or go home, but he's subtle about it. He's not arrogant about it. So he just does it. Like he puts it out there in the universe, everybody hears it, and then he comes back when it's done. Tired, gassed out, but uh, just keep pushing through. She won't have to stop anyway, so. She's gonna hurt me now. That's the goal. I think she calls this up the river, down the river. I call it a pain in the ass. So, you know, everybody's back there, and then it's just like a waiting game. It's like waiting for a, a space shuttle to launch, right?
coming to an end, which was great because I couldn't take it anymore. But it was coming to an end and, and like it's such a journey, I didn't want it to stop. But in terms of missing everything, yeah, I do miss the regiment. I miss the grind. I miss the confidence of, I am doing everything I could possibly do. I'm gonna get there. Now it's like, I'm immortal again. I'm like, eh, all right, maybe I should eat this, maybe I should eat that. It was interesting because we actually had our own, like the Karate Kid, the Mr. Miyagi moment with the crane kick. The night before, Kelly told me, she said, listen, because you're in an over 40 category, they may ask you to throw up your favorite classic pose. And in my head, I'm like, uh, what's a classic pose? Like, what are we doing? She's like, well, the classic poses from like the Arnold days. And essentially what they do is, you know, they want you to do more of an old school basic pose. And you know, the guy's on the speaker, contestants, please throw up your favorite classic pose. And I'm like, so all of a sudden I'm like, uh-oh, this is what we talked about. And I, I wanted to do this one pose, which was actually the one I opened it at the end of the show with. And I kind of looked in the audience and I saw Kelly and Kelly made her eye contact with me. And all of a sudden it was like, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. So I was like, I threw it up. And next thing I know, like everybody's clapping. And I'm like, all right, cool. And, uh, so I walked back down the hallway and I'm like, holy shit, I did it. I mean, it's just what it, what it came down to. And I was good. And then I walked out and <clears throat> I saw Michelle and Allie and Kelly, and you and all my friends and everybody. And I just couldn't hold back the emotion. It was like six months of pure hell just to get to this. And I think what startled me the most was, I was like, and it was worth it. Like it was worth every minute of it. Um, and even now I, I get choked up just talking about it. I mean, Kelly came up, gave me a big hug, told me how well I did. I was like, this is crazy. You know, how much time I spent grinding away with her in the gym was nuts. Um, so it was good, it was really good. And to be honest, I, I just I couldn't stop. Um, I was just, I was walking on air. Like, it was just amazing. Like, I didn't care where I placed. I didn't care if I did well. I didn't care if they were like, that guy sucks. Get him off stage. Like, I did it. Um, and fortunately, everybody was super supportive, so that was never the problem. To my, to my favorite Mr. Mom impersonation. Want to talk about the beard? Let's talk about the beard. <laughs> oh, extra larges don't even fit me anymore. You don't think I grow this this beautiful, thick, lush, scraggly piece of crap beard for no reason, do you? <laughs>